Hi, my name is Herc. My name is Velocity, and this is Laika. We're your hosts for Let's Explore Astronomy. Every week, we will bring you information in the world of astronomy and space. We'll give you information and tips to help with your backyard stargazing, from equipment to what's up in the night sky. We will also tell you all about the universe. We will bring you the latest discoveries, the signs of what you see in the night sky, and historical segments, looking back at the gray moons in astronomy and space. So let's get started. This week, we present Raijo Astronomy, where we showcase the information and science of astronomy. For our first show, we will begin with the most important tool in astronomy, the telescope. There are several ways to view the night sky. For thousands and thousands of years, man did not have telescopes, but yet he studied the night sky and learned a fantastic amount of information about the universe. The easiest way to view the night sky is with your eyes. Just look up. When you just look up at the night sky with your eyes, you get a full view of it all. Sit back and look at the constellations. See how many you can find. By knowing the night sky and where the constellations are, it will help you a great deal when you start using your telescope. The most important thing you need is a star map. You can buy them at bookstores or astronomy shops or get them online. As the Earth moves around the sun, we see different stars and constellations all the time. So as the year goes on, the sky changes and there is always something new to see. We will talk about constellations on another episode. Now, let's turn our attention to telescopes. You can see a lot of the night sky with the naked eye, but there is a lot more to see close up. A telescope magnifies what you are seeing and zooms in on the objects. Telescopes come in all different designs. Today we will talk about the telescopes you can use in your backyard. In next month's episode, we will show you the big telescopes at observatories used by professional astronomers. The first and simplest scope is a refractor telescope. This was the first kind of scope invented and the type used by Galileo. The first working telescope first appeared in the year 1608. And you probably ran right out and bought one of the first ones to hit the stores, huh Hark? Telescopes started to be sold by eyeglass makers in shops in Paris in 1609, but back then most scopes were all handmade, which is still a big hobby today, making your own telescopes. And Hey, I'm not that old. The design of a refractor is pretty straightforward. Light enters through a convex lens and is bent, or as we say, refracts. This makes the image look bigger as it is focused on a concave lens where you view it at. By 1609, Galileo had improved the design so he could magnify the image 20 times. Then he was able to see valleys and mountains on the moon close up. He also studied Jupiter and discovered that it had moons around it, the first discovery of moons around another planet. Even though the design is almost 450 years old, we still use it today. Binoculars, spotting scopes, and telephoto camera lenses are all basically refractors. But with a refractor telescope, the magnification is determined from the size of the tube. In order to zoom in closer, the telescope has to get bigger and bigger. Soon, people were building them up to 150 feet long. And that became way too big for people to put in their backyard, so they started sticking them in neighbors' yards. And the neighbors got upset, and they started arguments, and... and Wait a and... minute. Where do you come up with this stuff? That's not true. How do you know? Were you there? Actually, when you got to that size, the glass lens had to be over a meter in width. The size and weight made the scope too big, and they could not make it so it would not deform. Refractor telescopes are great scopes to start off with to learn stargazing. Small refractors are very affordable and excellent for viewing the moon, planets, star clusters, and larger objects. But deep space objects such as nebula and galaxies are hard to see through a small refractor. So enter Sir Isaac Newton. In 1671, he invented the reflecting telescope. The reflector uses a curved mirror. Light enters the tube and hits the mirror at the other end. The mirror is curved, so it bends the light and bounces it back to a smaller mirror that then bounces it to an eyepiece where you can view it. 
We often call these reflector scopes Newtonians, after Isaac Newton. They are simple, very good value for your money, and most popular telescope used by backyard astronomers. It works well to view all kinds of objects. You might also hear the term Dobsonian, or Dob telescope. Invented by John Dobson in the 1960s, this is a special mount that is put on a Newtonian scope that makes using it easier. The third type of scope is a combination of a reflector and a reflector. It's called a compound telescope. And the most popular compound scope is a schmidt cassegrain Here the light enters a glass end and then is bounced through a series of mirrors. This makes the tube length short and scope more portable. So those are the scopes available to the backyard astronomer. Now you have your scope, but wait, there's more. There are all kinds of gadgets and accessories you can add to your scope. Let's look at some of the most popular. As the Earth rotates, what you are viewing will move out of the field of view in your scope. Then you have to move your scope by hand and find an object again. And you will always move it the wrong way and completely lose what you are looking at. This is an equatorial mount. An equatorial mount will compensate for the movement of the Earth and keep the scope aligned to the object in space. If you are doing astrophotography, this is a must as you need long exposures. Finding the objects in the first place is the hard part. A finder scope is a small telescope attached to your big telescope. In the finder scope, you are not zoomed in as close, so it is easier to aim the scope. Once you find what you are looking for, then you look at it close up in the telescope. Finder scopes come in different designs. Some scopes add computer help for you. Commonly called a go-to system, once you align the telescope, you simply input the desired object you want to see in the computer, and the motor will automatically move the telescope to the right place and you can never have enough eyepieces. They come in all different magnifications. I also like playing with different filters. Most filters fit on the eyepiece. You'll find moon filters which cuts the glare and brightness of the moon. The moon is really bright in the telescope. There are also color filters. There are many colors and each one enhances something different. So buying a multi-pack is the way to go. For example, yellow filters enhances the red and yellow on Jupiter and Saturn as well as the contrast on Mars and the Moon. Green can make the cloud belts on Jupiter, Mars' ice caps, and Saturn's rings easier to see. Blue will help see Jupiter's red spot better. And there are many, many more colors like red, violet, light red, yellow, green, etc. So try them out and play around with them. For looking at nebula, UHC Ultra High Contrast Filter helps a lot and the wonderful world of CCD imaging. Astrophotography makes great use of filters such as H-alpha, H-beta, oxygen, and more. We are not just taking snapshots here, but really cool images of deep space objects. You may find that you want to get into this fascinating and fun hobby. Search the internet for some other people's work and you will be amazed at what you can do from your own backyard. And observing is not only limited to nighttime. A solar filter will let you view the sun. Remember to never, never, never look directly at the sun. The solar filter is a special filter made just for looking at the sun safely. It goes over the entire end of the telescope. Then and only then can you look at the sun. Find sunspots. It's a clear night here, Herc. Let's set up the telescope. Okay. Astronomy is such a fun hobby. It is great to get friends over and make a party of it. A star party. Find amateur astronomy clubs in your area and join them. It is great fun all getting together to stargaze. Plus, there are huge star parties around the country that are attended by hundreds of people. Those are great fun and a fantastic way to see all kinds of scopes and gadgets. And join us each week right here as we bring you all the cool things in the world of astronomy and space. Until next time, happy stargazing! <laughs> Hey, give a shout out to our sponsors, without whom we would not be here. Visit their websites and partake of their services and products. A big thank you to the Yukon Department of Tourism and Culture and Westmark Hotels, Westmark Whitehorse.